What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting with Zach Baker. I'm Zach Baker. If you are new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for being subscribed. Today we're going to be painting what I call the Green Machine Pattern and I think this falls underneath of the Easy Lure Pattern for Beginners category. It's fairly simple to do. Today's choice of blank is a little four inch topwater dart. We haven't done many topwater baits so I figure we'll give this one a go. I have a pattern for this one uh, I've been playing around with. It's kind of looks like a tadpole so if you guys want to see that video make sure to let me know i will have the link for this blank and some of the stencils that i'm using both listed below so if you guys are needing those for yourselves you can pick them up there let's not waste any more time and we'll go ahead and get into painting this bait Okay, so I've already given the bait a nice base coat of white. Next, we're going to be moving on to this neon yellow. Uh, if you're new to lure painting, I have a YouTube video showing how I prep my baits and then also on colors like this where it's a bright neon yellow, it's really important to have a nice base coat of white to get this to be that bright of a color. Otherwise, if you just spray this on the bait uh, without a base coat of white, you're not gonna get a very bright vivid color it's going to be kind of dull because there's no base coat underneath of it to help it stand out more. Uh, so what we're going to do this bait already has a base coat of the white and now we're going to give the whole thing a nice coat in the neon yellow and uh, in case you're nervous about painting a bait or you think you're going to mess up I started filming this whole video and didn't hit record on this camera that I'm using to, that's facing the bait. So I just went inside, put it underneath the sink and took an old toothbrush to it and it cleaned all the paint off real easy and I was able to start over. So if you mess up, it's okay, easy to fix. And because this is a pretty thin color or bright color, we want it to build up a little bit more to be that bright neon yellow. So I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer and then uh, we'll do another coat of it. And I'm focusing this, focusing this yellow a little bit more on the belly rather than the top because we're gonna be coming back in with a dark green. Next color we're going to be using is this Olive Green Deep. It's an ink. Make sure if you're gonna use some inks that they say they're good for the airbrush. These are also very thin, uh, so spray very lightly. And if you're trying to get it to be really dark, make sure you do a couple coats to build it up. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with it running and making a big mess. But what I'm going to do, so this bait has this nice little line. I don't know how well you can see it. This little line that runs all the way down the side of it. What I'm gonna do is focus this green being on the top and then kind of up here on this gill plate. I'm not gonna, it might go down the side just a little bit past that line, uh, but I'm gonna try to keep it on the back and up on the gill plate. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Nice and yellow on the side, dark green on the back. Also on both the paints and the inks, I just use water to clean out the airbrush. I do like to run either an airbrush cleaner through it or some Windex at the end of the day, but I'm just switching colors. Water pretty well does the trick for me uh, to clean it out. So that might help save you some money if you're buying some expensive airbrush cleaner and using it in between every single coat. Okay, next step, we're going to take uh, this paintbrush, which I have included in the uh, variety pack, stencil pack uh, on my website. I'll have it linked below. Pretty well any paintbrush will work, but these are kind of throwaway ones, and I have the bristles at the end are uh, pretty stiff to help get some nice splatters. So what we're gonna be doing is taking this orange paint and this red paint, and we're gonna be doing some splatters on the side. It's not gonna show up very well where that green is, but it's going to show up very nicely on the sides. And all I'm gonna do is shake up the can, and then I'm just going to dip my brush right into the lid of it. Uh, and what I always like to do is a couple splatters on the table to make sure we got the big chunks of paint off. <clears throat> that way we can have just small splatters on the bait. Because we want it to be fine speckles, not actual like big splatters. Get a little bit more on there. Oh, 
Now let's go and do it along the back because it is showing up pretty good. And the belly. But having those stiff bristles really helps to give you some nice fine speckles. Okay, that's good on the orange for me. We are going to come back and spray some more of this orange. So I'm going to leave it sitting right there. But I wanted to go and get the speckles out of the way. And so we don't freak anybody out. I'm going to at least wipe the paint off the brush. That way we're not mixing the two colors together. And I've always got to stop myself. And here I go again, saying I'm going to stop myself and add more. It's hard for me to stop because I love the way speckles look on fishing lures. But we're going to stop there. Otherwise, I'm going to go too far. We'll end up painting the rest of the bait using that paintbrush and splatters. Uh, so what I'm going to do is come back now to this orange. We're going to load it up in the airbrush. And we're going to kind of focus it up here on the belly and probably on the tail and kind of carry some of it up onto that gill plate. And this is the orange that we are using, fluorescent orange, Createx paint, and I'm using it straight out of the can, running about 40 PSI. I'm going to go all the way up to that mouth and kind of down to that first eyelet. And kind of going on the gill plate just a little bit. And then going to do it on the tail as well. Okay, that's all we're going to do with the orange. So let's clean out the airbrush and we're gonna move on and then we're gonna move back to that red. And the red we're using is just an opaque red. And what I'm going to do is as carefully as I can, push that up there. And actually it would probably be smart to hit this with a hairdryer because I haven't since I've done the speckles. And then I'm going to kind of tilt this up a little bit. Try to grab that back one. There we go. And we're going to be focusing this red right into the mouth and kind of fade it into our orange just a little bit. And same thing on the back of the tail. Last color we're going to be using is the black and then I've got just a normal comb uh, and what we're going to do is hold this up there and give it some nice stripes. So you can see this comb isn't quite long enough uh, to do the whole thing. So what I'm going to do, uh, because there's two different size gaps in it, I want the bigger size gap. On a smaller bait or if you're going for a different look, thinner gaps would work great, but for what I'm trying to do, I want to use the bigger gaps. So I'm going to go just past where part of that gill plate is covered by the tip of the comb right there. And then we're going to come in and spray some black. I'm going to hit it with the hairdryer really quick so I don't smudge that black paint with the comb. And then we're going to see if we can get this last little part finished off. It's always a good idea to overlap a couple. That way, if you have overlap the comb with a couple of the stripes, that way, if you have a little bit of overspray, you're not giving yourself a second set of stripes that aren't going to line up. So I've got it overlapping just a little bit. I got that a little thicker than I did on the front, but that is okay. See, mistakes happen. I think it'll still look fine. I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side. And make sure if you're flipping your comb over or uh, if you're not, make sure this is dry as well. Okay, so that's now dry. Let's hold it up there. Again, over covering the tip of the gill plate with that last big portion of the comb there. So you can see what happens when you don't get it lined up correctly. We got lines going different directions. I'm going to see if I can straighten that out just a little bit. I'm 
Man, so you guys see me double mess up. But hey, that's okay. I'm gonna go with it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to darken up up here by the eyes and we're also going to darken up the back but i'm not going to do the whole back i'm just going to go right down the center that way it'll kind of fade into that green just a little bit starting off with the eyes though there we go we got the back right in the very center is solid black and then it kind of fades into that green see that right there on the tip of it and I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer clean out the airbrush and then we'll be ready to pick out some eyes for this bait we're gonna be using some red eyes uh, with some black centers in them I think it's gonna go pretty good with the color scheme we've got going on here as always we're gonna put a little dab of super glue it's not a very big eye socket so a little bit of glue goes along with this and I'm just gonna slide the eye off push it down in there using the tweezers we go and then we're going to repeat that on the other side okay this bait is ready for some clear coat so I'm gonna let it dry for a while get the clear coat on it and then we will come back and take a look at what she looks like all finished up